There are no easy solutions to problems such as unemployment. If there were, then every country would adopt them and we would not have high unemployment uh, or large increases in unemployment during recessions. I think the institutional perspective to these questions is particularly interesting because such questions as unemployment and inflation are generally thought of as technocratic questions. We sort of try to get the science of it right, and if we got the science of it right, we will know the answers. And I think this perspective that there is, there are no easy uh, solutions highlights that even for a fundamental problem such as unemployment, when you think of reforms and when you think of changes, you're going to create winners and losers. For instance, you can often increase unemployment, at least temporarily, by encouraging firms to create more jobs, for example, by subsidizing them. But then those subsidies have to be financed by tax revenues, and those tax revenues will fall on some people. Or you can sometimes increase unemployment by containing wage growth. For example, that's what wage, uh, Germany has done over the last 10 years. But of course, that's going to create distributional effects among the workers. So that sort of issue of who are the winners and who are the losers is very important, uh, not only for understanding the distributional impacts of important reforms, but also to know where resistance to important reform projects are going to come from. New technologies have been the engine of economic growth. If you look at US economy or European economy over the last 200 years, it has had steady, sustained economic growth because technologically it's been innovative. It has reduced the cost of producing existing goods and it has created a lot of new goods that uh, have made consumers better off. And overall, even though people have been worried about the effects of new technologies on workers and wages throughout these two centuries or even longer, the technological changes that have driven these economies have also benefited workers. Wages have increased, employment have increased, uh, has increased in all of these economies. But the idea that you know, technology will replace workers is a very old one. It goes back to the Luddites who smashed machines because they thought the machines would take their jobs. And there's always, of course, some truth to it is that sometimes new technologies replace machines for uh, tasks previously performed by workers. And when that happens, some workers lose their jobs. And again, there are distributional consequences to it. But overall, the view of economists has been, and the evidence has strongly suggested that, the w workers and society as a whole benefits. Nevertheless, over the last 20 years, uh, these sort of concerns have, uh, have become more pronounced. Uh, many of the important technological changes of the last 20 years have simplified certain tasks and substituted machines for them. So we no longer need workers to do routine tasks and machines can do them. Numerically controlled computer assisted machinery is all about this process. So I think uh, technology has a more complex impact right now and I think policymakers and citizens are afraid of what technology is doing to society. And I think this is one particular instance where companies and, and governments can work together because I think it would be a, a big mistake to be afraid of technology. We just need to know how to harness te technology and whenever technology comes and does new tasks, it does also create new value added. And then the question is how can we make that, that new value added is more broadly shared in society so that it has the support of society in general and it benefits society in general.